Welcome back, everybody. Time for more of the Houston Texans Madden 21 franchise rebuild. We're set to begin the 2025 season today, and we made a lot of moves once again in the offseason. I prioritize signing some free agents who can still develop for a while and be part of our core if it takes a couple years to still get this team where we want them to be. I feel like adding Brendan McMullen maybe didn't make a lot of sense yesterday, but might make more sense as time goes on. Same thing for the defense here, we make the move to bring in 83 overall cornerback Marquise Brown. He helps us replace Bradley Roby, keeps cornerback a decent strength, and I think he has a lot of similarities here to Roby. I believe Roby has pretty good man coverage and speed, maybe Roby has higher catching. But either way, I think that Marquise Brown and Isaiah Fletcher are going to be a terrific tandem at corner. And then you consider what we have going for us along the defensive line with the superstar Jabari Carr, only 24 years old. He is becoming a very important player. Kerry Borden, and now we add Fletcher Cox as we try to develop pass rusher Stephon Ferris, Josh Richards, our first round pick. I feel good about the blend of veterans and young developing players that we have on this team. But I feel like I felt good about this team after most of our off seasons. So we just have to see if anything's going to change this year. And this depth chart is really messed up right now. I gotta fix it. Texans must feel like Manny Grubbs can be a versatile back for them. I am excited to see Manny Grubbs today. He's going to get some carries in the preseason, and hopefully we find a player that can be part of our future. Oh, wait a minute here. How about Geno Harris? That was embarrassing. If I could give the fans a refund, I would. Wow. That's him talking about our Week 14 loss last year to the Colts. It's become kind of a trend in my series to take a big bodied receiver and then the comment section says, wait a minute, he'd be better at tight end. I wasn't even thinking about that with Doug Tulloch and I wanted to take a look at his ratings and see what I think about the move and I think it's a great call. 88 speed, 79 short route running. I do think route running matters at tight end. And this is really all you need in many cases. If you watch my Broncos series, and you're like, wait a minute, I didn't think Levi Summers was going to be this downfield tight end threat. Well, he's got like 75 route running for everything, so he separates. Doug Tulloch, already good short route running, excellent speed, 80 catching. I do think that a move to tight end makes some sense. Sure, blocking is going to be low, but that's fine. So let's take a look now at what the game thinks about his overall. 70. 70 overall rookie tight end. That is not bad. And if we compare his ratings to everybody else, he becomes our fastest tight end with the best acceleration, second best agility. For strength, he has the worst at 67. So can't ever expect him to be a great inline blocker. But as a receiving threat, we can definitely find ways to use him. The question now is do we carry four tight ends on the roster? Because I do like Calvin Paulson, I do like Adam Troutman, but we might be deciding between one of the two. And if we're opting for the better blocker, looks like that would be Troutman. I still like Calvin Paulson though at 25 years old. He might get a decent contract somewhere. It'll be less than Gordon Norwood's most likely, but star development, we just might not be able to find a lot of chances for him to play. All right, that's more like it. This is what I'm thinking about for the offense right now. And one thing that could change is that we could see James Golden become the primary running back. I want to see four yards a carry. I want to see big play potential. Bradham showed a lot of that earlier in his career. 4.7 yards a carry as a rookie. It's been under four every year since, and we haven't seen the explosive plays. We gotta have that for our primary running back. Defensively, I don't know yet who is going to start at right outside linebacker, our second edge rusher. Could be Ferris, could be Richards, the preseason will decide that. 
and I think I'll just keep Jabari Carr playing nose because I think he's just the best fit there and obviously when we go to our pass rush packages then it's going to be Jabari Carr and Fletcher Cox with Kerry Borden coming off the field. First preseason game was a win for Houston and Caleb Baker one touchdown one pick on 33 pass attempts under 50% completion and then running Jeremiah Bradham 4.6 a carry outplaying James Golden through one preseason game no carries here going to Grubbs only really used two running backs Melo Clemens six catches 71 yards and a touchdown we haven't Really talked about Clemens very much in this series. Doug Tulloch made a couple catches. For the offensive line, two sacks allowed, and the defense. We had one sack, Montez Sweat, no interceptions. One pass deflection for Joe Jackson. Also an injury. And it's Mello Clemens. He'll miss the rest of the preseason then. He should be back maybe week two. But as far as receiver goes, I think there's a lot of competition there for the 4th and 5th spots. Especially after moving Tullick to tight end. So, I think if anybody can stand out, they're going to have a chance to get a few opportunities. And I like Clemens' ratings. I think I've talked about him before saying you could go in really any direction with this skill set. You just gotta pick something. Offensive line mentorship. Alright Laramie Tunsil. He wants to talk about Ben Williamson. This has happened before. Williamson is our backup center. And right now he'd be our seventh best offensive lineman. Let's go run blocking. I focus on run blocking for interior players most of the time. And a lot of these players have lower finesse run blocking. We'll work on that. For focus players right now, I'm focusing on Josh Richards, the first round pick. Lynn Cox, our second round pick, and then James Golden, because I really want to get this running game to the next level. All right, Ben Williamson earns another upgrade here. He's in his third season now, and pass block power is the weakness for him at the moment. Let's go with pass protector, as overall goes up to 74. And we get pass block finesse, so not working on that weakness at all. Hard to say if he has a starting future on our team. It doesn't seem like the opening is really going to be there, so we might just be developing him for his second team. Second game went well. Houston wins and puts up a lot more offense. We have Caleb Baker throwing two touchdowns. Deshaun Watson had one. Both quarterbacks very efficient in this game. And James Golden. 48 yards, a touchdown. Bradham once again wins with efficiency. Manny Grubbs gets three carries and 10 yards. So, so far, Golden not doing a lot with these preseason carries. Cooks, 96 and a touchdown. Craig Red scores twice. I'd say he has the best chance of being the fourth receiver this season. Four catches here for Chance Gerard as well. And for the defense... A couple sacks here. Hopefully we can have that be a big strength of the team. This is what it's all about right here. We get dual mentorship again. Ben Williamson. Did you see how he held up in pass protection? He was all over his blitz alerts. Let's go, Williamson. Plus three awareness. And now at wide receiver, Amari Jones. Here we go. What do we have to do with Amari Jones? Do we keep working on route running? I think so. I think that is going to be the best way to unlock his potential. He has so many other strengths. I'd like to go with medium routes here. Maybe some of those in the 10 yard range. Those curls, those in routes. I want him to be separating on those. Plus two release. I love that. That's become one of my favorite ratings to focus on at wide receiver and medium route running. Medium route running is his greatest strength right now as a route runner. But 87 release, 88 catching, 85 catch in traffic. It feels like only a matter of time before his game just completely takes the NFL over. He has a chance, I think, to be a real superstar, but we have to get him there. So what is the next step here? 
I'm going to go with the slot archetype. I want a little more short route running before I move on from that. We get one and plus three catching. Once we get him to like an 86 there, maybe the deep route running becomes more of a focus. Craig Red. Can he finally get some snaps this year on offense? It's going to be tough to find a lot of opportunities for him, but if he does, he has that big play upside that I always covet. We lost our third preseason game despite Deshaun Watson's three touchdown passes. Jeremiah Bradham, 3.8 a carry, same as James Golden here in this one. Brandon Cooks, 90 yards, two more touchdowns. And a few more catches here going down the board. No major standouts when it comes to offense overall. Stefan Ferris picks up a sack. That's going to help. He had one as a rookie. Also an injury from this week three game. And now Hugh Lincoln, who was our fourth edge rusher. He's going to miss a few games with a knee injury. Here in the final preseason game, we do get the victory. Caleb Baker puts together a solid performance with two more touchdowns. James Golden got 21 carries. I thought Grubbs was going to get more because I made him the second running back for this game. He goes 6 for 21 and a touchdown. Trayvon Moore, 5, 8, and 2 touchdowns. And Chance Girard leads the way here at receiver. Grubbs also caught a touchdown. That's solid. Looks like a little bit of pass rush in this one as well. And then a couple interceptions here for two safeties. So judging by the stats here in preseason, I have not been very impressed with James Golden, but I think I want to get a lot of looks at him this year anyway to see how much we can believe in him. We boost the route running for Jermaine Candidate. And we get only one route running rating actually going up. I was hoping to get a little bit of short there. Robert Bullard is going to play some guard this season. He'll play right guard in the place of Andrew McCoy, who has now become the team's long snapper. And then I'm hoping to split snaps as much as I can between Stefan Ferris and Josh Richards, and hopefully one or both of them can have big seasons. We only saw a little bit of production here in the preseason, but once the games count, we'll really see who can take that spot. So the passing game did pretty well in the preseason. Nine total touchdowns, only two interceptions. James Golden, 3.1 a carry, Bradham 145. What Golden did do, however, is he broke three times the tackles. I thought that broken tackles would be more of Bradham's game, and that would propel him to becoming one of the better starters in the league, but it really hasn't worked out that way. For the receiving, Brandon Cooks was our leading receiver, then Craig Red, Calvin Paulson, Chance Girard. We don't know much about him, but he's entering year two, and I think that also with his skill set, you can pretty much take him in any direction. I'd probably go with more of a slot receiver because we have a lot of downfield options. For the offensive line, looks like McMullen, Bullard, Williamson, and McCoy all did pretty well. Not many sacks allowed. I think our offensive line has gotten a lot better. For the defense, Joe Jackson, 25 tackles. Just a few sacks, a couple turnovers. For pass deflections, Fletcher had a couple, Jeremiah Brown and Terrell Edmonds for catches allowed, most allowed by rookie Lynn Cox. Getting the roster down to 53 now, and we are going to be trading Tim Settle. Not many teams are very interested, no high interest teams. I think for a player who's like in the mid 50s for ranking at D tackle, just a very low pick makes the most sense. If we can get a six, I think that's fair. So a sixth round pick for Tim Settle that opens up some snaps here for Niles McDuffie. As far as running back goes, we are going to be releasing Mike Henson. I know we signed him at the beginning of free agency, but I want to open up chances here for Manny Grubbs. We're probably going to let Enrique Freeman go as well. And then Curtis Bush will go to the practice squad. So four running backs for now. 
Well, I did my cuts not looking at how many players were on the roster and we're down to 53. So here's what we're looking at. We still have three quarterbacks for now. Four running backs. We have six receivers. Chance Gerard is going to make the team. Four tight ends. Not making a move there, but I feel like I might have to just to give Tullock some opportunity and decide if we're moving on from somebody like Troutman. Let's see if anybody's interested here. No medium interest teams. Well, what I'm going to do then, because no team is even showing medium interest, we're just going to release Troutman. I think that makes the most sense. With that open roster spot, we are going to add a pass rusher. We don't have a lot of power rushers, so we're going to add Steven Garvin to the active roster. And as far as the practice squad goes, I will be looking for a lot of players here in free agency, beginning with running back Donovan Ricard to the practice squad. A new season gets underway now. Houston takes on the San Francisco 49ers, and I'm excited to see if we can finally make some progress here. Oh, we lost Jeremiah Brown in that last game then. Okay, that's three injuries in preseason, and that means the rookie Lynn Cox is going to play. And if he plays well, who knows what that means for Jeremiah Brown. I actually put him on the trade block already because I wanted to see if other teams were interested and I just felt like maybe with Marquise Brown and Isaiah Fletcher, we're for sure developing them. And there are two main corners, but then maybe Lynn Cox becomes the primary third. But uh, now we're going to see Cox play. Big decision. Our goal is to make the playoffs. I mean, we can't settle for anything less. We've already missed a bunch of times. Where is San Francisco at this point of the series? Who is their quarterback? Rick Young is their quarterback. He is a fifth year, 71 overall, who spent the rookie contract of his in Cincinnati. And now suddenly he's a starter who has eight career pass attempts. Actually, we can't guarantee he's the starter. I mean, maybe they're starting one of the 70 overall quarterbacks. Let's check this out. They could be changing quarterbacks throughout the year, potentially. Okay, it is going to be Rick Young. 94 throw power, 68 speed, accuracy not great. We better win this debut. George Kittle and Nick Bosa are both 99 overall. Dre Greenlaw is a 92. They added Desmond King, Eric Armstead, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel. This looks like a fun matchup here. It's going to be tough, I think, in some ways, but I expect us to play well against Rick Young. Antonio Gibson is the running back. All right. Week one, getting underway. Ooh, this offensive line. That looks like a favorable matchup. We better win this game. Time to get underway. The 2025 season. Is this the one where things turn around for the Houston Texans? We're going to begin this journey on offense. It's Deshaun Watson opening the season and going down immediately. Eric Armstead and Nick Bosa combine at the 13-yard line. So first play for Brendan McMullen as a Texan, and he allows a sack. We got to get the ball out quicker against this team. That's the main problem is handling this front four. And now they bring pressure and Watson's just throwing that one away. Well, third down and 22. More pressure to deal with. And this one is hauled in by Jermaine Candidates. And we're set to punt. And the Rick Young era has officially begun. San Francisco takes over at the 35-yard line. Motion here with Debo Samuel. Rick Young, he's going to get the pass out somehow and avoids the first place sack. Pistol here as they spread out the defense. And Young will try it again, throwing the laser to Brandon Ayuk, and that should be a first down. 
Young, third straight drop back. That's open on the outside, complete to Debo Samuel. George Kittle is the motion man, and they'll run for the first time, and that is not going to work. There's Fletcher Cox. I don't expect teams to run on us very well this year. That backs up San Francisco a couple yards, and the pass almost gets intercepted. And we actually had some pressure there from Stefan Ferris. Third and 12 now. Ferris around the edge, almost got there as Young sails out of bounds. Not bad. I will be doing some rotation here at outside linebacker and pass rusher. Ferris gets the first opportunity. This was two plays ago. Didn't quite get there, but a step away. And then the, the last play here on third down. Looks like he's going to have some opportunities. He wasn't actually as close as I thought he was after checking those replays, but he's triggering those animations. And at least he's not, like, you know, getting no progress in his rush. Now we're at the four. We better get some room here. Hopefully a run. Two tight ends on the field. And we do run up the middle. Nowhere to go for Bradham. Trying to stretch this time. There's some daylight. And Bradham fights for the first down yardage. That is one thing he does well. He doesn't always break the tackle. But he still brings the tackler with him a little bit. Looking for a quick throw. Good idea. Wide open Jermaine Candidate. His second catch of the ball game at the 31. Brandon Cook still playing a lot inside, so Candidate and Jones are the two boundary receivers. On first and ten, Watson on the keeper, met and taken down. Nice tackle there for Sidney Jones. Now second down for Watson, nice pocket, stepping up and throwing over the middle for Candidate. So we really haven't seen him be a focal point in the offense. Now he's got three catches in the first two possessions. That's going to be a keeper again, and I don't know if it's going to work well in this game. Oh, no. Watson has come out of the game. Oh, no. Caleb Baker's in at quarterback, setting up a screen. Oh, no, that's not good. Please tell me Watson's okay. Third and 12. Here comes the pressure. Baker is going down. He gets sacked by Desmond King. He just got in the game and you're sending blitzes like that? That's not even fair. Wait a minute. I didn't even realize Steve Young's number had just gone to Rick Young. That could be a Steve Young jersey for all we know. You know, in most cases, I would change the number because, like, clearly, no one's wearing eight for San Francisco. But I'm just going to say he's wearing Steve Young's jersey. They didn't take it out of retirement. It's the same one. If this becomes Rick Young versus Caleb Baker, I don't want to see that game. Rick Young's going to throw this, and the pressure is forcing him to throw it away. This could become a 9-3 game here pretty quickly. Rick Young on target. There goes Ayuk. He's up to the 36-yard line. He made that play against Lynn Cox. On the ground now, running to the right side. Nice play. And that is Joe Jackson. Surprising they've been so pass-heavy early on, but the running game isn't showing any good early signs. This is what we want. Force a lot of third down passes today. And now we're playing press man coverage. And that's broken up. Oh, I love the call there on third down. And that's Marquise Brown. Watson's back in. Let's maybe avoid the option calls though for a while. Watson back to pass. Quick throw, caught. It's Brandon Cooks for six yards. 
Back to pass on second down. Watson on target. There's Jermaine Candidate. That's four catches. Wanting the quick pass here, and that's intercepted! That will be the first points of the year. It's a pick six for Jaquaski Tart. And San Francisco is on the board. That's a big mistake for Deshaun Watson. We'll see what he does next here with a new possession getting underway. There's Bosa forcing the throw away. Running this one now to the right side, and that is nothing for James Golden. Third down now against this great San Francisco front seven. A lot of superstars. And here's third down. Good protection this time. Watson's short pass is caught, but it's well shy of the sticks. So a first quarter that really didn't go all that well for Houston. We played good defense at least. Force the punt here, take over, Cooks for 17, and then 8. Can Amari Jones get a pass thrown his way, please? We lose 3 on a 3rd and 2 run? Are you kidding me? San Francisco football. Rick Young, 3rd down, got 8, not enough. We take over again. Where's Amari Jones? On 3rd and 9, it's Jermaine Candidate. I have Jones as the number two receiver. I want him to be targeted like he's the number two receiver. Not happening yet. It's all cooks and candidates. And a lot of sacks. San Francisco taking over once again. They get a couple first downs here. Brandon Ayuk making some catches. They're in field goal range with a chance to go up two scores. And now in the red zone, Jabari Carr with a huge penalty that leads to a touchdown. What's happening? Three plays right there. Loss of two yards combined. We can't move the ball today at all. And San Francisco is up 14, has a chance here before the break. Stefan Ferris. Good time for that to happen, but they still got a field goal. Starting to not feel very good about our chances this year of turning it around. Intercepted, though, by Terrell Edmonds. We had to have that. And now Cooks for 20. Kinlaw gets the sack. Amari Jones, and then another sack. Blankenship puts us on the board, at least. Um, I was just checking out the injury reports, and Montez Sweat is now out for the game. I was just trying to put in Richards, and I will be. But now it's going to be Richards and Ferris both playing. We've got to play lights out here in the second half. Rick Young making his starting debut, looking for win number one. And there's pressure through the middle as that pass gets broken up. And that time it's Isaiah Fletcher. So it's been a good battle, I think, with the reps we've seen between these DBs and wide receivers. Rick Young on second down sets up the screen. And a broken tackle in space. Oh, come on. That is the Antonio Gibson show right there. Third and one. And they'll keep it on the ground here with Gibson. And I think that the forward progress will have it. Here is a run to the left side now. And Gibson gets a bit more room. Here comes Debo Samuel now on second down. Pressure put on by Stefan Ferris. And that is broken up. Tight coverage again. Third and four now for San Francisco. We're bringing pressure here, and the pass is caught by Samuel. San Francisco continues up by 14. Here is Rick Young to the outside now. Caught by Ayuk, he makes a move. Young back to pass. 
Wide open again. They've run these same routes all day long. Can we just stick to man coverage? Now they motion out Antonio Gibson. And Rick Young just throws across the middle for an easy first down gain. So right there you had Steve Young's number throwing to Joe Montana's number. Pretty cool connection there for San Francisco. And this is a short run for Gibson. Retired numbers just got to be put in the game. It's got to be one of the easiest things to implement, right? Over the middle now and inside the five. This debut is going a bit too well for Rick Young. Rick Young on first and goal. Has a man in the end zone and that gets broken up. Nice play. Can we get the goal line stand? Here comes Debo Samuel. Oh, I thought he got the ball. They got me on the fake. Gibson gets two. They'll run it again. And we stuff Gibson. Nice play. Houston taking over now down by three scores. We've got to find the end zone. Nothing else matters. And running the football is going even worse than it was a year ago. And sure, this is a tough matchup. But we should not be playing this bad. We made serious changes to the O-line. And we are just completely overmatched. Three-man rush. Dumped off. And there goes Bradham with some extra yardage. Thank you. That's a huge play. Back to pass on first down. Now we find Norwood in the flats. And he's across the 50. Watson throwing again for Norwood, and that is a first down. We're at the San Francisco 37. So we got to go finish this drive, get a touchdown. That's step one in this, like, seven-part process to a comeback. Watson over the middle again. Norwood! If they can't cover him, expose that weakness. Here is Watson. We're protecting a little bit better, and there he goes. Inside the 20, Watson will not slide! Touchdown! Just running through the defense! That's one of those special plays. Oh, that was so cool. It's just time for Watson to put the team on his back. They're playing man coverage here. That's why nobody's in position. You have one player, he's right there. And he doesn't even react until Watson's already passed him. Watson just running through this defense. That was awesome. One of the best quarterback runs I've ever seen in Madden by the CPU. 10-point game. Time for a stop or a turnover. Rick Young in his debut across the middle for Debo Samuel with room to run. Gain of 23 yards. On the handoff now, Antonio Gibson with a good run as this running game continues to open up. We can't afford to allow a field goal here, but nothing more. That's a shot from Rick Young. Wide open is Ayuk. He got behind Isaiah Fletcher. Touchdown, San Francisco. Things are not going well on the sideline here. Coach Gino Harris, he's yelling at another coach. He is not happy. And now we're down by 17. Staring at an 0-1 start after missing the playoffs the last three years. Houston takes over on first down. Pass caught Jermaine Candidate. Stays on his feet and it's across the 50. At the very least, we've gotten to see Candidate show that he can be very productive today. Here is Watson again, firing downfield for Amari Jones. All right, we can go try to get that quick answer. Showing pressure, it's a four-man rush. Watson steps up and he's throwing this pass away. 
Third down and 10. Watson's got the time, and the pass is hauled in. Tight catch made by Brandon Cooks. Seventh of the ball game. Bradham in the backfield on second down. Watson fires, and that pass is broken up for Amari Jones, who has looked like our third receiver today. Under candidate. Third and ten, wow. How'd he get that away? It's incomplete. Fourth down. I thought that was going to be a catch. So now fourth and ten from the 14. What would the odds be here? Like 0.7% of a comeback win. They're sending pressure. Watson up top and incomplete. Just taking a shot there, trying to make something happen. And we turn the ball over on downs. Craig Red was the target. Well, it's looking like a loss to start the year. A couple takeaways that I'll be excited about, but this isn't what I expected at all. Back-to-back -back penalties there for Joe Tooney. We're having to go for it again, and Watson has just been sacked over and over again. This game is over. Hopefully it's not a sign of things to come, but this is the team we've been now for the entirety of this series. Rick Young wins his debut, throwing 302 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Deshaun Watson, 312 yards, got it going in the second half, but dealt with pressure throughout the game. We looked overmatched despite the investments we've made across our offensive line. How many times was Watson sacked? Does it say here? No. Let's just check that quick. It was way too many. That is six sacks. And then we also ran for under 20 yards with our running backs. Deshaun Watson was our leading rusher because of that touchdown run. Brandon Ayuk had a huge game. 162 and a touchdown. Brandon Cooks and Jermaine Candidate made some plays, and I was especially impressed with how Candidate looked in this game. Norwood had five catches and just the two for Amari Jones. Sacks given up today. Two by Tunsil, two by McMullen. One by Wallace, one by Tooney. So at least Robert Bullard didn't give one up. Defensively, Joe Jackson, Kalik Hudson, they made some plays in the ground game I was pretty happy with. Same with Fletcher Cox. He made a couple on the opening possession. And then we had a few sacks, or one actually. We had one with Stephon Ferris, a pick for Edmonds. Hopefully, in our next matchup, we don't face the best defensive line, and we can have an easier time. Oh, we get Kansas City. Yeah, it's not going to be very easy. So, what do we do now? Well, obviously, we just sit and watch the games. We already made our moves. The offseason is where you can change the team. I liked what I saw from Jermaine Candidate. Can we just focus on the positive coming out of this game? He looked really good. I loved how he played. I don't know why Jones wasn't able to make more plays, but at least somebody made them. Gotta protect Watson better. Gotta find a way to run the football. I doubt anybody was as bad as we were running the ball in week one. Well, there were a few teams. Watson's run got us to 41 yards. Tied for third worst. So that is going to bring us to the end of this episode, everybody. It seems that the weaknesses we tried to address were exposed the most despite the investment. I'm not even sure what to say beyond that. Leave your thoughts below. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And you know much more Texans franchise is on the way. The more we lose, the more I want to record. Have a great day, everybody. And I'll see you tomorrow.